Facing the fall, most local students are either preparing to head back to school or they've already done that already. Some are going to be learning from their home, at least for the near future. But what about families who don't have stable housing or they're experiencing homelessness? It's a very real problem. Shannon Nasworth, president and CEO of Ability Housing, joins us this morning to discuss the role stable housing plays in academic achievement. Good morning to you. Good to have you back on the show. And really, we want our children to succeed. And if they don't have a safe place to lay their heads at night, that could really get in the way. Absolutely. Um, the University of Florida did a study a few years ago showing how much, how challenging it is for any child who's unstably housed to achieve academically. Their outcomes are just much worse. And Shannon, I want to ask you this, because here in Northeast Florida, I think a lot of us go about our routines we see the homeless shelters, we think that those are just for adults. Sadly, that's not the case. There are a lot of families, a lot of children that do not have stable access to a safe place to live. Absolutely. Unfortunately, in the last four or five years, our public schools have seen an almost 75% increase in the number of students who are identified as homeless. So it is a problem across our community. So how do we help? How do we make a difference and make things better for these children and their parents? Well, the first and foremost, we just need to create more affordable housing. Uh, the reason people are homeless is they can't find a home they can afford. Right now in Jacksonville, a parent working a minimum wage job would have to work two and a half jobs just to afford a two-bedroom apartment for them and their child. That's not sustainable, and they can't pay attention to their child and help them with their homework if they're working two and a half jobs. So the most important thing is creating more affordable housing. But uh, separate from that, just pay attention. If you're worried that one of your children's friends in school might have a problem, help them reach out to the guidance counselor or the school. They have people who are trained specifically to help identify kids who might be in trouble with their housing and then link them with resources to help them and their family. Ability Housing has been doing this for quite some time. Are there enough resources for every student there? Because we saw on the screen about 370 or 3,770 students dealing with this problem right here in our area. That's a, a difficult statistic to swallow there. It is a very difficult statistic. And no, there are not enough resources. Unfortunately, this is a resource issue. We can make the investment and create the housing and also the other supports that the students need to be successful. It's about prioritization and choices. And we've just got to make sure every kid has a safe place to live and a safe place to do their homework at night. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you uh, about your organization. How are you doing nowadays with the pandemic? Because I talk to a lot of nonprofits, a lot of agencies that help the community. And usually, you know, they have these galas, they have events, they have fundraisers, and a lot of people give what they can. Now, many people in our community don't have that extra money to be able to donate it because they're having their own economic crises. It is really challenging for all the nonprofits. We do rely on the community support. For us specifically, we, we rely a lot on corporate foundations and other foundations, and they're redirecting their resources to address COVID, which is an important thing. But if we only address the crisis at the moment, we're not investing in the systemic changes that need to happen. It is a concern for us um, for our fundraising in the year to come. And I want to circle back about some of the signs that a child might not be able to go home, you know, to a, a stable house. What are you looking for here if you're a teacher, if you're a friend, if you're somebody that just somehow comes in contact with this family? There are a few things. First and foremost, I think if you notice the kid is wearing the same clothes a few days in a row or the one or two outfits all the time, Cleanliness can also be an issue. Food, if they're not food secure, that is an indication that their family's in crisis. If you're a parent, if there's a kid who's coming over and asking to spend the weekend a lot or spend the night frequently, that's usually because they're trying to find a quiet place to be. That might be an indication that they don't have a stable place to go home at night and they're trying to find a place. Those are the two key indicators that I would look for. All right, Shannon Nasworth with Ability Housing. Thank you so much for what you and your team members do. The website, abilityhousing.org. That's where you can go to reach out to learn about resources and make a donation if you're able to do that during these difficult times. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much. We'll be right back.